Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. This is the first video we did today. This was a Patreon-only exclusive. There was a lot in there besides what you can see up on your monitor. Um, and a lot of good stuff. It, it went kind of all over the place. But, um, you know, we are in interesting times. Everything is kind of being revealed. Some of us have had a pretty clear view of what's going to you know, be happening on down the line. And unfortunately, the most of the world is probably shocked, surprised, or still trying to just wish it all away. But, you know, the truth is that the more who know and understand, the, the better off everyone is going to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. So going right to it. You have Secret Service and D.C. police on the scene at the Russian embassy. Suspicious package. Uh, dogs sniffing. We'll see if anything uh, comes about with that. I don't think it'll be too long before there there is no occupied Ru Russian embassy in D.C. Um, and vice versa as things are heating up. Delegation of Iran-backed Houthis in Yemen. In Yemen, I said it. Okay, Yemen. <laughs> Yemen. Yemen. Ye Yaman. I see. There's a song like that. Is there? Say okay. Potato, potato, tomato. To yeah. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. Well, I'm glad you say it's okay, but not everybody says it's okay. You can get away with it. You know how many words that you pronounce out of the bag of a Gita that, I mean, I would just tongue twist over and like fall down. <laughs> you do. You do good, sweetie. You you have, you, you get some, what is it? Slack. Not from everybody, but I'll take it from <laughs> you. And so anyway... You know, here is a meeting between Russia and the Yemen delegation. That should say a lot because obviously when you're fighting anybody that's in the BRIC sphere of influence, just like with NATO, it, the lines have already been drawn. A lot of countries maybe haven't chosen their side yet, uh, but it's pretty obvious what's rolling on down. The other thing that's happening uh, is actually some positive stuff. Uh, you have the liberal justice minister in Canada resigned from parliament after the court ruled it was illegal to use the emergency act to stop the truckers protest. Uh, they seized the truckers bank accounts for crimes of protesting against the lockdown. You know, this is, as we've been saying, this, this is exactly why they're pulling the trigger on what they're pulling the trigger on right now. Because it's starting to crumble. That cookie is starting to crumble. French constitutional courts reject parts of Macron's immigration law. I mean, really, you got to ask yourself, how in the world is Macron and his best buddy over there, Trudeau, how are they still showing their faces? How are How's the sickle maker and, and good old Gil Bates, how are they still showing their faces at all in public? It's just crazy when, when we know so many people understand what's going on right now. This is La Jolla, California. Not in the sea there. It's probably just Hezbollah or Hamas coming to La Jolla. Yes, they, they're already in place in droves, but they're still boating them in, bussing them in, airplaning them in. And, you know, we're getting close to go time, guys. We are getting close to, close to go time. Signs are all around there. They landed on the beach in La Jolla. Yeah, you know, again, where is a good place to be? Well, you know, every place is going to have its challenges, but certainly not in the biggest cities if you can avoid it. Um, it. There will be, obviously, many reasons to be out of the bigger cities. They are prime targets when war is, you know, coming to our soil. And so many of you guys nailed this one as this alleged uh, terrorist warning Americans. Soon you will know who I am appears to be Movsam Samadov, a Muslim who was released in January 2023 after serving 12 years for being a terrorist. 
Um, you know, it depends on, on whose articles you read, because some say he was simply protesting uh, for religious freedom. But this is exactly what you uh, have across the globe. And, you know, his energy to me feels like uh, very dark, very, very dark. I'll just say that. You know, yeah, I mean, it, it did not feel good at all. But we're also looking at someone who's seeking revenge, too. I, I mean, this is somebody who has an opportunity, a huge opportunity to be in a big way, somebody who's a huge part of something where he can seek a lot of revenge. And he's he's not just going to stop at a little bit. This guy is what I call a teetotaler. He's going to do everything in his power to create as much grief to those who put him where he was and those who he thinks his 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 belief system is such that he feels that he's in the right and everybody else needs to be punished. And he's not just going to stop at doing a little bit of punishment. No, he he feels he's right all the way. Absolutely. Well, again, you know, they will, people will justify their actions through books. Yep. They'll just simply say, you know, look at this verse, et cetera, et cetera. This says that it's per perfectly justified to do this. And this is the entire problem with, again, being so deeply indoctrinated into a system that you justify atrocities on one side or another. This is exactly how they have us divided and split up. And so you have so many people from so many countries that have been um, abused, really, uh, through the system put in place. And in, in, in their eyes, it's a NATO uh, thing. It, it's a U.S., a NATO, a U.K. thing. Um, or it could even boil down to a Christian versus uh, Islam thing, which wouldn't be the first time. I mean, you know, again, you just got to look back to history. And then talking about history, it's looking very, very clear now that we are heading towards a big possible confrontation and the lines may be drawn uh, for the Second Civil War. That appears to be showing down. Now, January 26th, the showdown is set. President Biden gives Texas Governor Abbott till January 26th to allow feds access to the razor wire or there will be consequences. Well, what will be those consequences? We will have to see. Remember, 27th of January is the date uh, concerning all those uh, Davos members of the few issues that they got to iron out. Otherwise, they won't be okay to go ahead and, you know, add their amendments. You guys, we've talked about that before. There's, there's so many things going on right now on so many different levels. Um, big, big things just directly ahead. Here we, I'll let you listen to the Louisiana governor. We support legal, not illegal immigration. We support secure and safe borders, not open border policies that allow criminals, human trafficking, and drugs to pour into this country. We stand with Governor Abbott and Texas in reminding the federal government that under our Constitution, states are still sovereign, and we have the right to protect our citizens. So Louisiana stands with Texas, and this is Kay Ivey. Uh, she's the governor of Alabama. Texas and the states have stepped up time and time again. The White House purposely absent. I've had enough. Texas, you could count on Alabama to have your back. Oklahoma stands with Texas. A simple statement from the governor of Oklahoma, Kevin Stitt. Over here, we see Sarah Huckabee Sanders. If President Biden won't defend us, states will have to defend themselves. Arkansas stands with Texas. So we can see uh, at the moment we got 15 states siding with Texas against uh, 46's regime and their policies. So Florida, Iowa, Virginia, Georgia, North Dakota, South Dakota, Tennessee, Alabama, Montana, Idaho, Utah, West Virginia, Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Louisiana are all uh, standing together at the moment. And so, um, yeah, we're starting to see a pattern, and we will have to see uh, Ohio is in here too. So I think there's, they didn't mention Ohio. Um, 
I, I, I'm pretty sure that the governor of Ohio made the statement too, so it might be 16, as it's changing constantly, and the maps are changing, and people are trying to figure out, okay, what side of the Mason-Dixon line am I on this time? Ah, yes. Uh, and, you know, again, we did get that this kind of, this area here will be under one block. Um, is that correct, Cindy? That's what that's what I I get, and that's what I've got. It it will be there's there's going to be blocks, but I think we're a long ways from seeing how this is going to pan out. We're in the very 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 baby stages of this. So I mean, right now it's a lot of um, definitely keeping people distracted, keeping people not looking right in front of them. So we'll have to see how things continue to pan out. But it definitely is uh, one pretty big step towards separation yeah you know speaking about section 4 article 4 again if the federal government doesn't respond to an invasion then it's up to the states to defend themselves and you know it's the federal government's fault this is obviously an invasion you, you, you know you'd have to be a complete moron not to see that and the problem is you know they're not complete morons those that are um, denying it they're just part of the agenda that's just the simple fact mm -hmm. well I mean everybody ever everybody who's playing here they all have a, a purpose in the in the a higher agenda so really it, it's going to be boiling down to those of us who are doing our best to try to take care of ourselves get ourselves strong get ourselves selves placed in a in a situation where we have a better chance because even though I do appreciate that there is a lot of support for Texas. You have to understand that all of these polit politicians collect their paycheck from kind of the same place. Absolutely. You know, and, and again, lobbying is, is, is paid bribery. But at the same time, uh, there is this big divide going on. I would love to know exactly which ones understand the plan and which ones are kept in the dark because I don't think everyone knows the plan. Uh, certainly when you get down into uh, the House with all the different representatives, I, I think there's probably a lot of representatives that just kind of don't have a clue. Uh, we've seen that some of them are not even really that swift. They're just kind of, you know, it's popularity contest, really, when you get down to it in so many ways. Well, I mean, they're just they're kind of paid to, to sign a paper. So papers are put in front of them, and they're told sign here. So they sign there, and they get a lot of money for that. So they're not really deep into having that understanding that most of us have because they really i mean they're just like anyone else who are working 12 16 hours a day they're not spending their time looking out for what's really happening they're just doing as they're told and that's the problem with just simply blindly following and then we have again so many that maybe uh are members of the army navy air force etc that like when with the statements talking about uh, if I am asked to an arrest an, an American citizen for refusing to surrender to a tyrannical government, I will refuse. And instead, I will arrest the people asking me to turn against my own countrymen. So you're going to have a lot of them that are going to dissent and break off. They're, they're not going to go along with it. And in fact, there's lots of rumors of right now feelers being put out for just that with many uh, in the militaries uh, making statements that they'll just simply leave and head to texas and sign up for the national guard um, to go on to the other side so you know just be aware this is deteriorating very very uh rapidly this was a little uh a, a little vote here which side are you on 92.9 percent says texas 7.1 percent the u.s federal government uh, it looks like there was 7,461 votes here. You know, as we've been sharing with you guys, this is something that we've always seen, that you would have a civil war type of environment going on. At the same time, just during or immediately after it starts a Red Dawn scenario. So we've been talking about this for years. This was from a year ago, looking at different zones and how are they going to split it up. This one has five zones, and five zones is what we got, but we, we didn't get the same. It, we get Texas to Florida uh, being one with you know Louisiana, 
Alabama and Mississippi, um, perhaps probably Georgia, m- maybe Arkansas in that group too, and Oklahoma. Um, the West Coast, yeah, this Chinese occupation, and you know, I would say this is one of the places I wouldn't want to be the most is is in California, honestly, as well as um, you know, I think there are little pockets you could hide out in beautiful places in Washington, Oregon, and out in the hills of California, but certainly not in the big cities, which they will look to control early and which could be targets um, in the first uh, strike of of WW3, as I do think they would, again, use their hypersonic missiles, which they have so hyped uh, from submarines very close to the coastlines, and hit the major targets, the military targets. If you're right next door to any sort of military base, not a good spot. Uh, any high value targets, you know, just be aware of what's in your area. Uh, this one we did two years ago, again, talking about the Second Civil War. And Cindy was pointing out that this map looks a lot like the map we were just just looking at, does it not? I mean, you don't have uh, Arizona in the mix. But if you look at it, um, yeah, you know, uh, it, it's starting to look that way. It's starting to look pretty, pretty close when, when you get down to it. Absolutely. Uh, this one was from two years ago. Uh, Ex-generals talking about civil wars coming in 2024. And so that was from two years ago. Uh, this was from a year ago again. What comes first, WW3 or civil war? In, in the controller's playbook, Civil War, and then WW3 comes when we are fighting ourselves. And yes, as we were talking about this three years ago, the beginning of a Red Dawn scenario playing out, um, absolutely, we called it from the beginning that all the illegal migrants coming over, they're Trojan horse, and that's exactly how we worded it. Um, and we even talked about a Trojan horse scenario because it was part of the wording uh, that we got from the guides uh, at the beginning of the 45 presidency, as soon as inauguration happened, uh, I knew that was going to be, even going back to 2016, I knew uh, that 45 means were going into the Civil War scenario. Uh, if they got Hillary and put Hillary in place, we probably would have already had um, all the WW3 drama. But this is the scenario um, that's been in the books for a very, very long time because, again, of that 2025 uh, pact agreement that's up. And one of our Patreon family members um, sent me a link to somebody that Graham Hancock was recommending for looking at this other, um, I believe he's a Vedic astrologer, his take on the cycle of the Yugas. And according to him, uh, the end of the Kali Yuga is 2025. And so we'll look at that in greater depth because, um, yeah, his timeline feels better than Sri Yukitwar's. Uh, uh, exactly. Um, it feels like we are going into a, um, we're going out of the Kali Yuga and into a transition period, which will last a while. Uh, according to this astrologer 300 year transition, I know you don't want to hear that. Uh, you want to step right into the golden age, but see, this is the difference because you know we give you kind of the good, bad, and the ugly, regardless of um, what that does to the amount of people that subscribe or unsubscribe. Because we're not here for that purpose; we're we're here just to help those that will listen. This is why we do this, and you know, it's not to get rich; it's not to uh, do anything like that. Have fame and fortune. In fact, we purposefully try not to get too big because then it would put a bigger target on us in, in a sense. Uh, we want to be able to help as many people for as long as we possibly can uh, through these times and to change the timelines because, yeah, absolutely, 2025 is, uh, is an opportunity to really shift paradigms. I do think that, but they're going to throw everything in the kitchen sink at us in 2024. And I just wanted to play this uh, a moment of this clip that was uploaded on January of 2018, January of 2018, where I was um, sharing what I had seen for what I believe is this year, probably, most likely this year. It happened, as I said, at least four times that I can clearly remember, and it seemed to happen in pretty big intervals, you know, like seven to ten years. 
and uh, uh, it's uh, very, very disconcerting. disconcerting. And, and there's, there's different, different details that come. Uh, uh, in other, other parts, parts of it, though, I do see troops, and I see helicopters especially, and I see parachutes being dropped. So there's also troops uh, involved, and they're dropping soldiers, and there's you know military mobilization going on, and it feels like the United States is being invaded. And I can see them, I can see the troops, and I can feel that I'm in, where I am, it's warm. And at that time, the very first time I was living in Connecticut, and then once I had the dream in South Carolina, that was the clearest. And um, where I'm seeing the troops, it's very warm. It feels like it's somewhere in the southeastern United States, you know, where I currently am living. Um, and I can see them clearly being dropped from helicopters in mass, and it's cloudy, and... There's like helicopters that pop into these big dark you know, rain clouds that you get down south and then pop out and different troops drop them down. And people are running and people are you know, becoming refugees and they're, they're moving away from the coast and they're moving up, especially from South Florida. Because it feels like South Florida is a place where troops have landed and not ours. So here it feels like the United States is being invaded. Um, the only thing that more of the logical mind is saying is basically Russia, China, um, and others um, are the ones doing it. But I didn't see those troops, but I, I knew and I kept hearing from people that they've landed, you know, down around Miami and down around the Everglades, and they're moving on up. And there's a huge refugee swell of people rushing away from that area and heading up northward, trying to get up away from where the troops have landed. And I also feel in those dreams there's troops coming uh, in from like Mexico, as well as coming down from Alaska and Canada into the United States as well. And people are just in a panic, and people are just running and becoming refugees, and in mass. And I'm in there with them, and I'm ca helping carry this older man who had two feet blown off from something, some sort of explosion. So he's missing his feet and. I know we have to climb some steps, and it's really hard getting them up the steps where we are, and that was something that stuck with me. And so it's, uh, that part's always stuck with me. And then at that point, I remember hearing people say they're only 20 miles behind us and heading this way. So it was a feeling of, well, you know, it's no way we're going to outrun them with this huge refugee population. So I'll give you guys links to all of these. And, you know, at that time, th were, when I made this, I was uh, living down in uh, the Sarasota area. And so my impressions were that they were heading up through like Port Charlotte and Fort Myers and everything and heading up towards Tampa uh, on one side, but also making their way up along the uh, Atlantic coast as well. Um, you know, this is all stuff that it still feels like we're kind of on that timeline. I think we can shift it, but, you know, again, it, it's all about how people wake up and how people handle these things. And, you know, a big part of how a group of people handle these things is the group of the immigrant migrants themselves because um, some of these people may find that, you know, they are treated nicely when they come in. And they might find that they're not hell-bent for uh, any sort of revenge or, or for war. They just, you know, maybe they find they like us and they want to settle in with us or, you know, whatever the case is. We got to recognize that, again, how we treat people, even in the, the smallest sense, it has this massive ripple effect. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we are all human. We are all human, and so many of these people have already been through hell, and they have been through losing everything in their lives, and that's why they've gotten to the point where they're letting everything that's left go, if there is anything left, and they're striking off for a new opportunity. Yeah, some of them may be just hell-bent for re uh, revenge, honestly, but putting out your own frequency of, of love and compassion and not giving in to the, uh, the tendencies toward a violent form of revenge. The best revenge is living well. The best revenge is rising above. Uh, the best revenge is putting an end to the system, which will not be by the sword. It's going to be 
totally different. It's going to be by working together and understanding the bigger picture, taking the power away from a power structure that thrives on chaos and violence. You know, and, and one thing as we're as we're going through this, and I will tell people again and again and remind as much as I need to, always, always, constantly look for that silver lining, no matter what is going on in your life, no matter what is happening. There is something positive. There is a silver lining. And this is how we continue to move up and up and up and allow the heaviest to fall down below us. Absolutely. So on that, we will leave you guys and we'll uh, once again just thank you for being with us on this journey. We look forward to your comments. Keep taking the high road. Keep putting out the positive vibes. At the same time, recognize that we are in challenging times. So be as prepared as you possibly can. And I would strongly recommend a daily mind-body breath practice, meditation, prayer, positive visualization. Source blessing. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.